You are listening to the Fan to Fan Podcast, and this is part two of our discussion about the 2023 fantasy football season. We're getting ready for the draft, sleeper strategy, and more. Here we go. Welcome to the Fan Fan Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Bernie Gonzalez, and this is part two of my discussion with Fan to Fan All Star Allen as we prepared together for the 2023 Fantasy Football Draft. On the show, we've talked about TV theme songs, Saturday morning cartoons, horror movies, video store memories, and we're fans of all of those, but we're also fans of fantasy football. Fantasy football has certainly become part of the culture, part of pop culture. And while there are paid websites, podcasts, social media accounts, YouTube channels devoted strictly to fantasy football, getting ready for the draft, during the season strategy, we can't cover everything. Alan and I just focused on the draft, getting ready for the draft. And in part one, we discussed some draft strategy. We also discussed a quarterback position, wide receivers, and we're going to continue our conversation. We're going to talk about tight ends. We're going to talk about running backs and more. Here we go. Let's get into running backs because, and I think maybe we take the same approach with running backs from wide receivers because if everyone uh, is uh, is out there and, and, you know, they're in those first few uh, rounds, they've got the McCaffreys, the Chubbs, the Ecklers, Bajan Mustard, Robinsons. Let, let's get into like those other guys. Like for me, those are my guys. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Those are your guys. Yeah. All right. One of the perennials for me has always been Tony Pollard, but I always grabbed him as a handcuff, him and Alexander Matson. In like the last few rounds, when nobody was paying attention, I'd be like, give me Pollard, give me Matson. I'd have Lockett. And I think for three seasons, I had all three of them yeah, we- every, every time on my roster because I knew that they could at least give me some points. But now Pollard's up. Madison's uh, up. Yeah. So well, Madison's not one of those guys we're talking about. So Pollard, you're, I mean, obviously, you know, you're not going to get Pollard this year unless you spend a high. A hundred percent. Yeah. I just middle second on him, you know, like so he has two outcomes, right? He's either going to be Austin Eckler and become, you know, kind of a semi undersized pass catching touchdown making magician like Eckler's been since Melvin Gordon left the, the, the Chargers or he could, you know, suffer a fate like, you know, Giovanni Bernard or Dion Lewis, like other secondary pass catching backs who put up great fantasy numbers for a couple of years. And then just couldn't stand up to the pounding or like, you know, never really got the shot. Because as you said earlier, in real football, coaches don't give a fuck about fantasy, <laughs> right? So they don't care about your roster. Right. <laughs> if, if, you know, Pollard, think about what Pollard did last year, uh, you know, running with Zeke. You know, like Zeke got a lot of carries for a dude who basically might lose a race to the two of us right now. And I have a fake hit. <laughs> um, and he's a, you know, and he's a, he's a patriot. And I do not give two shits that he's a patriot. But the um, Zeke's, uh, Zeke took a lot of carries for Pollard, and Pollard still was a top, top back because the dude is just flies. Definitely worth a gamble. But anyways, mid-round, right? We're talking mid-round. Um, yep. Let's get into like the Miles Sanders, the Damian Pierces, like those guys that, you sure. know, uh, we're, and I don't even want to go so far yet into like the Isaiah Pacheo or the uh, the J.K. Dobbins. But yeah, let's go into those mid-round RBs. First and foremost, mid round RB that I'm I'm targeting, and I and I really hope he stays there because I consider mid round to be like the third fourth round. If I'm gonna take a running back and 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 go against my zero RB approach, it's probably gonna be Joe Mixon. Mixon always one of those guys that everybody drafts thinking that he's he's going to be uh you know Saquon Barkley or sure. he's gonna you know he's like, like he's always been drafted like that and he's he's been around for a long time now because he was drafted when he was twenty. Uh, so he's still not even that fucking old. Um, so I love Mixon. Uh, if he makes it to the mid rounds, uh, he's on a great offense. You always want that out of a running back. He's the only guy, Bernie. He's it. It's just say, I mean, it's just Joe Mixon in the Cincinnati backfield with with that high. That's what you want because those guys are fewer sure. between now. Those off those offenses where you can look at one guy and you're like, you know what? If you get Derrick Henry. There, there's no one creeping up behind him for carries. He's going to be there for right. 17 games until he gets hurt. Yeah, uh, until he gets hurt. <laughs> but, but, but that's what you're getting. That's what you're betting against, right? As long as he does. Oh yeah, you hurt. can't. You can't factor in. You can't factor in. Um, you know, as an analyst, Heath, Heath Cummings, who says you can't bet on health, but you could certainly rely on the data. 
right? So it's like, yes, you and you're looking for those three down backs too that right. can get you the red line, uh, red zone that can get you the catches. Yes, 100%. So Mixon, I love uh, Rashad White in Tampa, catches the ball, runs. Uh, I know he wasn't a super explosive athlete in college, but it seems like pros have worked for him. Last year, he basically made Le- Leonard Fournette in Tampa irrelevant. And- yes. I don't think with him. Fournette's been picked up by a team yet, right? He's no, I, I, he's, you know, he's like Eddie Lacy, too busy eating cheeseburgers and smoking weed, uh, which sounds good right now. I might do that after the spot. Um, <laughs> the uh, the uh, the Miles Sanders you mentioned in Carolina, that's the top dog out there. You know, don't buy the Twitter X hype that he's going to be split a roll with, with Raheem Blackshear. I don't, you don't give somebody $26 million. Uh, You know, like as far as guys on new teams, if a running back is given that sort of money, Okay, so it didn't work for Chase Edmonds last sure. year, but like that's a that's a rarity. Miles Sanders is yeah. a very talented back. We know yes. that he's prime age. I don't mind taking him around like round five, six. You know, if I start zero RB or hero RB, okay. Um, I don't mind taking Miles Sanders as my RB two. Uh, Someone like Damian Pierce because you know he can run, he can catch, he has that RB one ability, but then he's sure. got Devin Singletary there competing for a few for a few carries. So Pierce is chronically undervalued, and I actually think that Devin's, the Devin Singletary factor actually makes me feel better about taking Pierce this year. Okay. Because Singletary is such a fucking bum. Um, I've had Singletary, like, I should, you know, I shouldn't say that. Uh, you know, uh, Devin Singletary is a, is a good football player. I don't think like, he listens to the podcast. No, no, I hope not. No, no, we would talk about <laughs> Yeah, you know, but, like, he's on, he's on my list of fuck these guys. I mean, Singletary takes, he takes a lot of carries because he's a professional running back. He's like a Rex Burkhead, remember, for the Patriots? Like, sure, 100%. Devin, yes. Devin Singletary, like, he he will catch the ball. He it's like get him, uh, was it when he was with the Dolphins, uh, him, Miles Gaskin, like, they're like, yeah, you know what? They're dependable. They're going to be totally, like, But he lacks explosiveness. He never gets in the end zone. He was with Buffalo all those years and never yes. became a star. So I think that Devin Singletary is not in Houston to take Damian, Damian Pierce's role or to take his carries. I think he's there to play on third down, play on uh, the, every third or fourth series. Remember what I said early in the pod. I think he's there to play 40% or less of the running back snaps to keep Pierce fresh. Feel free to feast on Pierce in the fourth or fifth round. What about those guys? Uh, Isaiah Pacheco, J.K. Dobbins? Uh, I feel good Pacheco, about that. Pacheco to me feels like one of these fucking bum, like flash in the pan, really scumbag late round. But yeah, you know, like just, it, 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 and again, not personally against the player, just the pick. Yeah, seventh round pick. Undersized running back on the best offense yes. in the NFL. I'm not yes. drafting Isaiah Pacheco in any formats. He doesn't catch okay. the ball. McKinnon's there. Yes. However, if you wanted to take him as like your third RB, okay, hope for the best, you can do that logically based on the offense in which he plays. For me, I think he's replaceable. I think that at any point, Andy Reid could just decide to take you know, the hot dog out of his mouth uh, and, and it look it on at his play sheet and say, you know what? He, he did Edwards it with uh, Clyde Edwards uh, Hilaire. He's just like, hey, Pacheo, you're up. He's like, wait, me? Yeah, you're up. And he killed it in the playoffs. And maybe what you're saying is people remember Pacheo from the playoffs. So maybe he gets drafted a little higher than he should because that's what, you know, that's what they remember. But you got McKinnon, you got Clyde Edwards Hilaire still out there. Yeah. And maybe they're the ones that you want to draft before someone like a Pacheo. So Pacheco's going to naturally go because of what he did in the playoffs, right? right. And, and and he helps some teams win. But to me, those are the guys, those are the running backs you want to avoid. The guys okay. that come on, you know, last part of the season. It was a uh, running back a few years ago, Jeremy Hill. Sure. Uh, for the Cincinnati that like yep. the, these less lesser talented undrafted um, guys that, that hit for these big offenses. Again, you can take him. You can take Pacheco seventh round as your RB3 and feel – okay about it and hope that the offense just overcomes. But sure. like you said, Reed decides to, to insert CEH and start to give him a chance, or if CEH looks good, that's who's going to be out there. Yep. McKinnon plays the hot those, hand for sure. Right. Yep. And McKinnon caught all those touchdowns last year, right? Yes. You realize, I, I was in a draft today where I took Jarek McKinnon in the 17th round of a 2015 <laughs> draft. 2015. I was seven years early on Jarek McKinnon. Because he never did fucking anything that deserved being a draft pick of any of any measure 
Was he with Baltimore at the time? No, he was with Minnesota. He was like okay. a rookie. He was like a rookie in Minnesota. Okay. He's, he's in his 30s, McKinnon. So I like the chances of him doing what he did again are probably sure. slim and nil. It's such a fluid situation, and they could literally, they could put in anybody. So as far as Pacheco goes, I, I, I'm i staring clear. All right. I'm going to give you uh, a backfield here that's personal to me with the Bears. Dante Foreman, Khalil Herbert. Now that David Montgomery is gone, it seems like he's the clear RB1. But now you got Johnson in there, too. Who are you? Are you even looking at anyone in the Bears' backfield? Sure. I, I so I said earlier, I'm actually kind of excited about the Bears' backfield. So, okay. Daniel Herbert is your home run hitter. I think Herbert's going to be given the first chance early in the season, but I don't think any of these guys is worth more than like an 11th or 12th round pick. Okay. Right. Okay. And I think that what you do is you spin the wheel. So I'm somebody that I draft for health, I draft for youth, and I draft for touchdown uh, potential. So that's Khalil Herbert first, and then to me, that's Roshan second, and then that's Foreman, like a distant third. I probably won't touch Foreman at all, but like then someone in, in my leagues will pick that motherfucker up like sure. off waivers and beat me with him in like week four. All right, let's get into tight ends quickly, but like I'm talking like for 30 seconds because it, 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 there's not much there, right? Either you've got Kelsey Waller, maybe Hayden Hurst, Kyle Pitts maybe. Is there a guy that you're down on for tight ends because it's either you got the you got some of the top three or you're just playing the the week to week matchup game but who I'm, are you down on i'm down on mark andrews because i'm down on lamar jackson so i, I don't. thought you're gonna throw out a, a george kittle maybe i am so, so kittle's my next in line uh, okay I'm not on a lot of these guys in the top five uh kittle i think there, there's a lot of mouths to feed in and in, in san francisco you hear that yep um, you got the, Debo, you got AU. Well, I mean, okay. What if what if you draft Kittle in you know the fifth or sixth round, and you're only getting what Dallas Goddard or Pass Ironmouth got you at like in an eighth or ninth or a yeah. tenth round pick? That's what you said. I fear taking those taking those you know a guy like Kittle. So and you said earlier you're a little down on Kelsey. Is it just an age thing or, or so? I'm a what do you feel? <laughs> so I've been a little down on Kelsey. So Kelsey's 21 was not anything to write home about. So he was still tight end two behind Mark Andrews. But he had a lot of weeks where he was trash. Like, mm-hmm. like it was just like the, the point, not, it, I keep calling the player, but like his output was trash. Um, it's it's fantasy. Of, if people are listening this far, they know. <laughs> well, there were a lot of lean weeks in 21. Last year, there's a statistic on him. He had more targets and touchdowns than he ever has in his career. So last year, I believe, ready, was the crescendo. Okay. Kelsey's been our guy. I have this down here, 2016 through 2022. He has been the tight end one every season except 2021 where he was the okay. tight end two. Okay. He is consistently like a wide receiver one, a back end wide receiver one, you know, like wide receiver seven, eight, nine. So he gets you a lot of points. It's not like I'm saying shy from Kelsey, don't draft him in the first round. Okay. I think you still should. If, but if if you're someone like me, I had Kelsey on my teams in those years where you could get him in the second and third round. 7, 16, 17, 18. People still weren't seeing that he was this this fantastic talent. I think now you, you're talking about a player that's going into his age 34 season who just had more targets and more touchdowns than he's ever had in his career. Okay. It, there's this great thread out there on Twitter, X if you could find it, about tight end aging. Tight ends age like fine wine, right? The good ones. Tony Gonzo, Antonio Gates, Travis Kelsey, you're talking mid 30s still producing, like yes. Kelsey did last year. But when they fall, oh my god, I forget the Bears. They signed uh, the man. He was the tight end for the Packers. I think he was with uh, with your oh, all the Mercedes, Patriots, Mercedes, Mercedes, Lewis. Mercedes <laughs> Lewis, and he's been around for and that 18 seasons. And he'll grab it. Yeah, he'll, he'll sneak <laughs> a goddamn touchdown every season. But he'll that's he's right. Mostly he's mostly there. Like he's a he's a, uh, like a like a basically an extra, uh, an extra yeah. tackle. He'll be a safety blanket for that like yeah. nice. Five to ten yard completion for field, but he's there to block. But all right, but you're so this is my my summation on on my why I'm down on Kelsey. Okay, I feel like it's last season may have been the crescendo. Okay, and we may start to come down, and even if we just come down a little bit, like we did in 21, people who had him in 21 and spent a first round pick on him probably didn't want to spend a first round pick on him again last last year. And even if it's a little worse than tight end two, that's a disaster. Got it. Right. If Mahomes starts, especially with him, have a pick. I see what you're saying. Right. If Mahomes starts going outside to yes. Sky Moore and Rishi Rice and Kadarius Tony mm-hmm. and the whole host of all these athletic flyboys they have, and Kelsey loses a step at all, even if it's sure. at all, 
and he falls to a second or a third round value, you're going to spend a first round pick. Now, I'm Makes probably sense. wrong, and he's going to throw egg in all of our faces like he always does, and he's going to be just fucking spectacular and 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 kill the league again because you know Gates and Gonzo and all the greats did it at 34 as well. Sure. So. There you He'll go. Probably be fine, you know, but uh, but just oh, that, that's my word of caution. Okay, is, is that beautiful season last season came after a down season and also involved him having his most targets ever and his most touchdowns ever. That's going to be two things that are going to be tough to do again. Remember, you can find the Fan to Fan Podcast at www.fanpodcast.com. Facebook, just search Fan to Fan Podcast. That's F A N the number two F A N. On Instagram at fan to fan podcast or on Twitter at fan to fan podcast. We'd love to hear from you, so send a message and let us know what you think of the show. Thanks. And now, on with the show. All right, so I'm going to throw out two things for my draft strategy because honestly, I just want your opinion to see if I should go this route. I've always gone RB, RB, RB. So I've never had a top three running backs. I've always gone three running backs, and and that's not even including like a Pollard or a Metzen. I've always gone three running backs in my round one, round two, round three. I'm stacked, but I've always gotten killed on the wide receiver position. Okay. So last year, I changed my my strategy. I went RB Kelsey because it was late in the first round, late that's in the strategy. second round. I, yeah. I was like, you know what? Tell Kelsey's here. And like you said, someone in 2021, they're like, hey, he shit the bed. I'm not picking him. I'm like, you know what? I've never had good luck in the tight end position. I'm going to do some A-B testing. So I got my my solid running back. I think it was Travis Etienne. And I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to pick somebody else. I, I think, it, I forget who it was. But anyway, all right, I'm going to grab uh, Kelsey. And then I went running back again. And then I cleaned up uh, my roster with some wide receivers. So I was like, all right, this year, I've got two strategies. Both of them involve tight ends. Here's what I'm thinking. One, either go high on Kelsey and then try to go for Mahomes to go for the stack. Or option number two, screw that because Kelsey's going to go high and Mahomes are going to go high. So then I focus on balancing it out, not going RB, RB, but going wide receiver, wide receiver, taking your your experience to heart. And then when they start going on the tight end run, because that's what happens, right? You get Kelsey and then someone goes after Mark Andrews. Then I'll start looking for a Waller, Danny Dimes stack because then I can afford to get Danny Dimes later. But then I get at least someone in Waller that maybe if their offense is going to open up this year, he gets to be the beneficiary of that. And it allows me to get better wide receivers than I've ever had before. Survey says. What I, I, I love about that is 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 many points as you can consolidate into one team from from players from multiple teams is 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 a good idea. Just you know, obviously don't go too far with it in case the offense You don't sucks. want to do the like grab right. Saquon in the first in the second round, then grab Waller in the fourth round, and then grab Danny Dimes in round seven because now So then you're yeah, then you're the Bernie That's Gonzalez right. Giants. You know? Yes. So it's it's yes. but I mean it can work. I mean, I've seen I've seen people do multiple chief stacks and mm-hmm. in, in crews in the regular season. A lot of times though, the, the super souped up stack teams run into trouble later in the season because generally if you're a high flying offense, um sure you'll be a high flying offense for 10, 11, 12 weeks. Yep. And then you now everyone is underperforming for you. You'll underperform. Yeah. Yep. I like the idea of you coming off of going a lot of running backs. I don't want to be the person though that like, you know, pistol whips you out of um out of taking your RBs. No, that's I, good. I'm good. I mean I, if I were you, I would start with if you're somebody that's always been RB heavy, I would start with like a hero RB approach or yes. Go with the one and one, you know, like yep. the, you know, like when they ask you if you want vanilla soft serve or chocolate soft serve and you yep. say twist. Um, and, and, and the one thing I think I'm layering on this year into now it'll be my my ninth year uh, uh, or eighth year playing is paying attention to those running backs that are like before I would just be like, yeah, I'm going to grab that guy that the sheet that the experts are telling me to grab. Now I'm trying to be a little bit more nuanced where I'm like, I get it. If Derrick Henry's available, I'm going to grab him. But like a Bijan Mustard Robinson or a McCaffrey, they're going to give me passing and running. I'm going to pay more attention to that. This year, I I might look for that Kenneth Walker, Ramondre Stevenson after I pick a wide receiver first. And that way it affords me the ability to get a Waller and the stack going because I'm like, yeah, before I'd always get that like C minus, C plus, B minus grade. But I'd still always get into the playoffs, but only one of those seasons would I get into the championship. So right now, I want to be like, no, I got to have enough balance scoring. 
Yeah. yeah, and I mean it's tough. You get, you get you you have to stick and move the whole season. You know, like I said, like when you're when you're edge of your draft, think of the draft as like planning your first four weeks. Yeah, because I love I love that strategy. Change. The biggest thing with the draft too is like don't don't get lost. Stay present. You you you're talking about take, Sli- take, slightly take, sober. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, there, I said slightly. <laughs> I was just gonna say, you know, there have been drafts where I've like I've been like drunk as shit by the seventh round. You can see it because my like my like my team just starts to go downhill. <laughs> I'm gonna fix that, you know. And, and that's the thing is being able to fix it too, right? Like, sure. The last couple of years, terrible drafts, um, just based on the fact that I'm you know doing something that that I'm working on not doing this season, which is uh, over, which is drafting as myself, not going too heavy into like these Twitter X like you know tweets where it's like. These are seven guys that you need to get in your draft, yes. and you end up taking them and like that, that's like, like a lot of a lot of and passing up stars, you know, and a lot it's of like, Twitter X white noise that can le- make you lean a little too heavy into the analysis that somebody else sure. in the next tweet is going to completely contradict, right? But I would, I, yeah. I, I would, I would give you this advice, man. Like, try if you want to try a wide receiver round one this year, you're going to be someone that usually normally take a running back, so yes. you have to think about it like this: is you're pushing a, a running back down the board. So yes. you're going to be surprised by who's there in the second round. You're, I, I'm, you're, I'm hoping your strategy uh, works out because I you're, think you're going to be surprised. Henry, you're going to have Henry there in the second. Most likely, these are the guys that are going to appear to you in the second round. Yes. Henry, Chubb, Pollard. It, uh, depend, I wouldn't touch Taylor and Jacobs with a 10-foot pole. This okay. Season, either of them. But I mean, if they fall late enough for you where you're 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 kind of a running back whore, you know, like mm-hmm. if Jacobs falls into the third round, into your waiting arms and then mm-hmm. ends up no worse for the wear. Yeah. He's only 25 years old, right? Like you may able, you, I heard you say Stevenson in, in ETN, you, you like those, those guys are going to be there in the, in, in the third and fourth round for sure. Like, yeah. Th- that you makes can sense. get, yeah. you can get a primo wide receiver and a primo running back just by splitting that because so many people now do zero RB zero right? RB. Yeah. Or is so like, like this is another part that, you know, we really didn't get into is there's a, there's a lot of logic in home leagues to taking Mahomes, Allen hurts sure. in the first two rounds, because like I said to you before, it's all about scoring those points, baby. It's, yeah. It doesn't matter how you get them. So mm-hmm. now you got people taking like a Mahomes at Kelsey stack third sure. or the second round for those of us who, who, you know, who have a draft board or, you know, we're already set up with projections that's pushing like, absolute like monstrous talent down the board but guess what you go up against that Mahomes Kelsey guy uh they're scoring a ton of points Mahomes and Kelsey are on Sunday night so chances are whatever lead you have is up big enough positives and negatives to to doing that but um I, I I like that you're you're willing to uh to change from your old strategy and try something new it's a good thing about fantasy it's always been fun I've never not enjoyed playing a season, even if I've not done as well as I wanted to, because I I really get into it. I'm like a, a waiver wire whore. I pay attention every day. I'm Draft actually at what yeah what other people are doing. I have to because I'm like you know what I've never been great at drafting, so I start playing in like weeks four and five when I see what's available, and I'm like you know what I'm gonna grab this guy. And you know what? Like, I'm going to grab a Geno Smith. And little did I know, he's going to be consistent enough to get me into the playoffs, not into a championship. But you know what? I feel like I got my money's worth for sure. Um, right. All right. Speaking of that, to give people their money's worth, considering they're paying nothing for this great advice, Alan, drop some knowledge here. Round one from someone who's been playing for 20 plus years uh, or just about 20, just 20 years coming up on 20 yeah. years, who's had 50 plus rosters. In t- for the 2023-2024 fantasy season, what should people be doing? First round, first pick. I'm basing this on a 10-team PPR. Got it. Uh, for anybody who's listening. So so this will be... Your mileage may vary. Yes. Right. So yeah, first overall pick, you got to go with the safety, security, and, and the luxury of Justin Jefferson. Okay. Minnesota Vikings, 389 fantasy points last year. You know, wide receiver one, 2022. Wide receiver four, 2021. Wide receiver six, 2020. I mean, he's... Just now coming into his dominance of of wide receiver one prime. This is Devontae Adams a few years ago. This is Julio yes. Jones. This is your this is your guy. He may not be the flashiest. He may not be uh to some people the the weirdos, uh like the sexiest, like Jamar Chase, but he is the number one pick. If you walk away from a draft with the number one pick without Justin Jefferson, you were doing yourself harm. Um I know there are some people that that, that go CMC. I, I I I can't see 
oh, in a PPR draft, you wouldn't take a 24-year-old just stud number one receiver who averaged 21 points a game last year. Yes. Uh, second spot is, uh, for me, is Jamar Chase. As I said, a lot of people like the sex appeal of Jamar Chase. He scores a lot of touchdowns, makes a lot of big plays. Great uh, chemistry with Burroughs. Right. Yeah. In, in his rookie year, then 21, he was number number five wide receiver overall. Last year, he was number 12 overall despite missing four games. He averaged 18 points a game. Burrow is a baller, a gamer. He'll mm-hmm. be there. I know he had a calf injury, but he'll be there. I think he'll be there week one. Chase just makes thrilling plays. He's a blast to have on your team if you've ever had him. It's appointment viewing. Again, uh, as we've been talking about with Mahomes, the Bengals are a premium product now. They're mm-hmm. on in prime time. They're on in late day. This is a guy who wins you games at the end of the day. And the good thing about like a Jefferson, he's the guy that you're going to see all the uh, all the highlights about because he's going to make that catch. He's going to beat the matchup. He's yeah. going to make the good one-handed catch. Chase is going to be the guy that you're going to see the same highlight for but he's also going to get you 40 or 50 yards on that reception because he's, he'll just he'll just beat his man and get you those four or five points and maybe free himself up for the touchdown. So the now difference, just, yep. no, the, the, the solid difference of the two of them is this, is it's explosive plays. Jefferson has the ability to do what Chase does explosively, but Chase doesn't because he, he, he shares with T. Higgins, which Jefferson sure. doesn't. He doesn't have those extra points per reception. So that's why that whole three points a game. Do that math over 17 games. It's a lot of that's a lot of points between two players. So but I still think Chase could end up wide receiver one, which what which is why he's my second pick. My third pick is Christian McCaffrey, CMC, now of the San Francisco 49ers, formerly of Carolina. He scored 368 motherfucking points last year. 21 points per game from the running back position. This is the guy. Forget about the the health. Um we showed you last year. When he stays healthy, when he stays on the field, he uh, was um, running back two overall last year. Um, just an absolutely devastating player. He's 27, so he's in the last year of his prime for a running back before the running back cliff. Uh, so if you want to mess with him this year in the top three, go for it. Like I said, some people take him one. I wouldn't do it over Jefferson. I wouldn't do mm. two over Chase, but I would take him if I had the three pick. I'd be coming home with McCaffrey. Okay. Uh, fourth pick for me is a guy we haven't talked about enough tonight. It's Austin Eckler. Big friend of the fantasy community was also 21 points per game last season. He was the number one. He was the number one running mm-hmm. back in all of fantasy. Now a lot he's of that that's three down ability. He's he's uh, red red zone uh, catching. He's running. He's there. Mucho mucho offense, right? And 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 with the Chargers, Kellen Moore is there now. It's good. Uh, they're going to be throwing more. Um, he had 19 touchdowns, though. That's what you have to be wary of. Two things with Eckler. Okay. 19 touchdowns last year. He's 28 years old. Running back Cliff is 28. He's a little different because he he hasn't taken the pounding that other running backs have. He catches sure. the ball a lot more. He should be just fine. You should be no problem when when the elite, elite players like like Eckler, Ladanian Tomlinson, Marshall Falk, not that he's those guys, right? But he's in the same similar skill set. Sure. When they were 28 years old, they didn't slow down at all. Right, so Pedal. I don't see Eckler slowing down either, but you have to be wary of a 28 year old running back, and you have to be wary of a guy who scored 19 touchdowns because touchdown regression is a real thing. Right, this is two years in a row now he scored over expected. So would he? He only scores 10 touchdowns this year. That's still really good. Is it worth the fourth overall pick? Sure, probably. Yeah, probably with what else he brings. Mm-hmm. So that's why get him in the mid mid first. Number five, I have your little Cooper Cup. You draft him in the top five for the 10 games he's going to give you. Okay. Cooper is 30 years old. He plays on a very bad team. He plays with an often injured, super duper talented quarterback, Matthew Stafford, um, and the Rams. The thing about Cooper, though, is 2021 when he was the number one overall receiver, he averaged 101 receiving yards a game. Wow. Last year, he averaged 90 in the games he was healthy. I mean, the dude is fucking sick. Like, it's... They were always you know, playing from behind. I mean, you know that that's that's the one thing about the Rams too. Like they they have to come back in a lot of games. And but he's just got you know, like at some point he's gonna break. You know, I mean, I sure. have to say like I don't want to I don't want to whammy the guy, but and I, like I said, you can't count on 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 injury. But a, a thirty year old wide receiver takes a lot of hits over the middle, catches a lot of passes, and and did what he did in twenty one. Sure. But when he is there, it's going to be one of those things where it, it, like he's worth the first overall pick. He's still in your top five. He's so in my top five. Absolutely. You're thinking he's not going to break this year. <laughs> if I can get 10 games out of cup at 90 yards a game, Bernie? Like, sure. 
Yeah, that's killer. That's good to me. That's mm-hmm. killer. Uh, six is your boy, Travis Kelsey. Picking in the sixth spot, all those five guys are gone. I'm taking Trabbo. I uh, Even at 33 years old, since 2016, has been the the number one overall tight end. Uh, right, the, the concert, like you said, keep, it, keep the crescendo going. <laughs> 12 touchdowns last season, 18 points per game from the tight end. It just, it's, it's, you, you, this, you'll never lose the tight end spot. Like yes. very rarely when he, when, when he's your tight end. And the other part too is like you said, Mahomes is prime time. And that's the other thing about Kelsey is that he shows up prime time too. So he'll right. get you those two to three touchdown uh, games and it, it won't blink an eye. You'll just be like, yep. All right. Next, you know, if you went to bed early next morning, you wake up and you're like, I hey, look, Kelsey's got 23 points on, uh, on, uh, in my spot. That, that's great. Amazing. And one again. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's unless it's, the it's, person it's, you played had Mahomes, and then you're like, God damn it! <laughs> as that happened to everybody, though. Yes. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, Kelsey, it's just he's he's worth the the first round collateral. Um, the chances of him falling off this year again with Eckler, this is just we're talking about a guy who is a, a little advanced in age, but just so elite, elite that you have to you have to gamble that money to win. You know, so gamble that fantasy. It's just gambling. <laughs> right. Seventh overall, um, going with the uh with, with the rocket ship, Tyreek Hill. If I if I was picking seven, he is at the um another guy. You you'll notice this theme in the first round, and this may end up coming back to haunt all of us, Bernie. Okay. Um, later on this season. He's twenty nine, wide receiver cliff, but la- you cannot ignore what he did last year. Uh he was wide receiver two overall. Uh he was wide receiver six in twenty one. He was wide receiver two in twenty twenty. Fairly consistently a top three wide receiver. Yeah, but you're feeling good about Tua this year to give uh, to Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I think Tua stays healthy, and I think that uh, Reed Freaks, as he does, uh, he had that one rough season in 19 with, with Mahomes. Of course, I drafted him that year. But um, uh, other than that, he's always been like a top six-ish wide receiver um, in Miami's wide open offense. Bring me more, Tyreek. In the eighth spot, I got your your boy, uh, B. John Robinson out of uh, Texas. He's going um, high in so many drafts. I mean, it's it's, not- it's it's interesting though because so so check this out. I I have I do have some some so an interesting um stat for you. So the last two running backs to um, make good on their first round fantasy value as rookies were Saquon Barkley and Ezekiel Elliott. Okay, so you, there is a history of it in a in a pretty recent history of it. But it doesn't happen every year, and uh, Barkley and Zeke did not have Arthur Smith as their as their head coach, and uh, Desmond Ritter as their quarterback, and Tyler Algier, Cordell Patterson in the backfield with them. Now Zeke, I think, had Alfred Morris, who he shared carries with for two two games before he broke out. Okay. Um, and then Barkley never had anybody. Barkley was just a, a genius from day one. <laughs> um, you know, and then dealt with some injuries, but yes, I mean, in Bijan's uh college career, 3,500 yards, 41 touchdowns, he's five foot 11, 215 pounds. I mean, he's made for this. They mm-hmm. they, they spent the eighth overall pick on him, feed this man the damn ball. But they are they are the guy who takes Bijan in your first round is the guy who likes the sexy pick. He's not doing it because he's young, he's doing it because it's like the new toy. Remember sure. that. It's funny because, like, you know, if you're in fantasy, you know who that guy already is in your head. Like, you're like, oh, yeah, sure. It's going to be Nick. It's going to be Calvin. It's going to be that guy that you're like, he always likes that guy, that sexy pick. He's going to be all over Bijan. Yep. So that's, that's the, that, you know, I, I used to be that, like, for a while in my different incarnations as a fantasy player. Like, I took Zeke his, his, his rookie year and I was going to blow my brains out after the first two games where he was split <laughs> with fucking Alfred Morris. Um, but then it, it paid off. So flash from the past yeah, with the rookies, baby. <laughs> um, uh, ninth overall, I'm I'm taking another aging wide receiver, but a but a a, a, a target monster, uh, Stefan Diggs. Awesome offense, awesome quarterback. Plays in prime time. He is 29 years old, just like Hill, like Cup. Cup's 30, right? These guys are. This whole first round is going to be different next year. I promise mm. you that. The question is, which of us don't eat shit on some of these these guys sitting on the age cliff? But uh, Steph was number four wide receiver last year, number seven in 21, number three overall in 20, scored 18 points per game. Here's the thing. You're getting into the late first round. So you take Steph, right? You get wide receiver one, Justin Jefferson, like ability and, and, and points for about 10 weeks. And then mm-hmm. he starts to tail. I've had Steph Diggs 
a couple times over the last uh, in in in, my, in some of my PPR leagues. I would take him again. Tell you right now in the keeper league, the way that it works out, I'm picking I'm picking seventh. All you motherfuckers in that league, I will take Diggs <laughs> if you leave him for me. I will take Diggs and then I will trade him to one of you before he falls off. So there you go. But you're picking ninth in the first round. So if you get four, five, six good weeks out of Diggs, trade him at his height. But take those weeks because he puts up. Go look at his numbers. He puts up wide receiver one weeks every goddamn week in the early part of the season. He likes playing in the warm weather. He likes playing indoors. And he likes playing with Josh. He's Josh Fair Target. Final pick is uh, Saquon Barkley would be my 10th pick. I would go okay. back to the running back. Um, he's only 26 years old. This puts him healthy this year too. In the list, Bernie, that I just gave you, right, which are all the elite players in the NFL, Jefferson, Chase, Bijan, and Barkley are the only players under 26 years old. Wow. So Barkley might end up being a steal at the 10th mm-hmm. pick. So if you, with your little new little strategy there, yes, you're picking late. I I take Barkley and then take uh, C.D. Lamb in the second Go round. For a receiver, right? good. That's right. a, that's a nice one too. Uh, yeah. One round, I like that. But if you can get if you can get somebody like Tyreek in the eighth sure. spot, and then you can get you can get Barkley because people are going to be grabbing Devonte, of course, gonna be grabbing Garrett Wilson, and they're going to be grabbing Amon Ross St. Brown, and yep. These are guys that I didn't mention that like uh, I would happily take in 12 team leagues like at the turn high second round sure i'm going with barkley he was the number five running back last year he was number 30 the year before coming back from the acl he's two years removed from the acl Hmm. we should see he's in a contract year he averaged 17 points per game last year i think he has that mccaffrey season from last year i really love barkley this year Anybody that's lucky enough to pick in the back end of the first round and the top end of the second round to take him in that area and just with a with a stacked up wide receiver one and yep. just dominate their league. You're starting year number 20. It's going to be roster 50 plus, maybe 60 plus now. Thank you, Alan. And let's do it again next year. And yeah, I'll bring, I'll, I'll bring my idiot brother on next time. You'll love him. Mm. <laughs> I love it.